What have they done? What a massive oversight disaster. Seven Artisans were kind enough to send me their new 28mm f5.6 Leica M-mount lens. Is it any good? Let's take a look. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So yes, in today's video, I'm going to have a closer look at the 7 Artisans 28mm 5.6 and compare it to the TT Artisan 25.6. How do these lenses compare? If you want to buy one, which is the best one for you? Hopefully I'll have an answer by the end of this video, so stay tuned. To test the lens, I headed over to Portugal and I was using the lens on a Leica M240 and also on a couple of other cameras and I'll explain as we get into the video. First impressions, how does it compare to the lens I've already got, which is the TT Artisan? If we take a closer look, you can see that the 7 Artisan is roughly almost two times longer than the TT Artisan lens. And both lenses give you focus from one meter through to infinity with a focus lock at infinity. The clicked aperture on the TT Artisan version is a bit more precise and watch-like, maybe more like a Leica lens. The 7 Artisan's version just does click, but it's very subtle and it's a bit more soft and spongy affair. So if you want precise, the TT Artisan one is much more precise feeling. Both lenses have a smooth focus through, but I think the TT Artisan version feels slightly more dampened and overall nice, nicer made, I would say. The 7 Artisan lens comes with a metal lens hood and a metal lens cap and a plastic rear cap. The big question is, how do these lenses do in real world testing? So let's now look at some sample images and we can see how the lenses compare. I was flying to Faro, Portugal, so I took the lens with me. And to my delight, the place I was staying in had a rooftop terrace in the old town of Faro. So that was a great place to be able to test the lenses both up close and at infinity. As you can see, I had the Leica M4P film camera with me as well. So I was using that both the model of the two lenses, but also to shoot some film. I haven't yet developed that film yet, so all the photos you're going to see are going to be digital. So first up, I was testing the 7 Artisans 28.5.6. Here's me shooting the lens at infinity and comparing the sharpness at f5.6 and f8. If we crop into the centre first, you see the centre sharpness is good enough at 5.6 and only slightly maybe better at f8 but the corner sharpness is better at f8. If we look at the same test again, 5.6 versus f11, the sharpness is good at f11, but I'd say slightly softer due to diffraction, both in the center and as you can see here, in the corners. If you're using the lens at the minimum focus distance of one meter, the lens is sharp at 5.6 and it's limited to whether you can see or not to focus, I found. <laughs> and then in terms of vignetting and lens flare, here's the lens being stopped down and as you can see f22 it's more of a spray than a star so next i wanted to see how it compared to the tt artisans 28 5.6 uh, i really like this lens and i've been using it much more than expected i'll link the video at the end if you've not already seen it so first both lenses at 5.6 take note of the vignetting on both lenses and as you can see they both improve especially for vignetting at f8, although the TT Artisan then seems to have more vignetting at f11 and f16, which is maybe slightly strange. I noticed the difference in cropping. The 7 Artisans might be more of a 30mm than a 28mm. If we now zoom in at the corners, firstly, excuse the dust, and then secondly, you can see the lower saturation and lower contrast of the TT Artisan versus the 7 Artisans. This gives the 7 Artisans an apparent sharper look, but whether or not it's true resolution, I'm not too sure. Remember, you weren't using the lens to unlock the focus lock before using it, otherwise you'd be caught out when doing your street photography. So now it's time to do some proper testing. So all the photos have got a Mr. Like a black and white preset applied because that's how I would use the photos in kind of normal use. I started off my testing from the comfort of the roof, enjoying the sunshine and just uh, taking photos of the various views in different directions and anything that kind of caught my eye. I really like this table, I shot it with film and digital. Then headed down the stairs into the apartment and saw one of the apartment doors was open and I just loved the sun sign spilling in it onto this old TV, which you don't really see so much now. And even the light in the toilet was nice. <laughs> Next is a quick mirror selfie to remind myself of what lens I was using on the particular camera because this lens is not six bit coded, so there's no EXIF data. Then it's time to go down the stairs, leave the apartment and do some walkabout photography. This is what I do for my photo walks. So if you're interested in this type of photography, definitely get in touch. I can put a link below. I tend to photograph anything that catches my eye, whether it's boy racer cars or graffiti, old buildings. I particularly like old buildings. And I love the interplay between the framing and these shots. I was here for quite some time shooting film and digital again. 
Uh, I just love the, the composition aspect of this type of work. It was then back to more of a touristy area of Faro near the marina bit. And again, now looking for light and what caught my eye as I was walking around. A little bit of street photography. You know, this guy thought I was photographing the paintings and then I reframed to get him in it and then got a closer shot of the paintings after. I nearly always have my camera set to black and white display mode in the EVF so it really simplifies the scene and that way I can focus on the, the form and the compositions and the light rather than be distracted by lots of colours. This car caught my eye so I went in for a closer shot and this graffiti really caught my eye. I've got several shots of this from different angles but this was on the last day. Uh, some of the old town back streets are really pretty, both a mix of rundown graffiti and kind of more arty stuff. It, there's quite a lot of things to photograph if you if you look carefully. And the shade is quite nice to hide from the, the afternoon sun if you walk in the shade. <laughs> I got a bit too sunburnt. I then decided to cross the railway tracks to look for more interesting stuff on the other side. I'd run there in the morning so I knew there were some cool buildings and again more graffiti. Quite like the aeroplane in the in the top corner. And I couldn't work out my favourite angle, so I kept taking quite a few photos. This train shot by so I tried to frame it between the buildings. Then this cool old car again caught my eye, so I was trying to different compositions. Back now through the station towards the apartment. I find railway tracks and old trains easy to photograph. I like the lines and the details. And what about colour? I did shoot a few photos in colour as you can see here, and added a bit of saturation with one of my presets. You may have seen this photo in my last video where I compared cheap camera versus Leica and this is how it looks as a raw file. And I was also using the lens on a Micro Four Thirds Lumix GX80 or 85 for a Leica M2 Micro Four Thirds adapter. Just for my own interest because I had that camera with me. And that in turn made me think, hmm, I wonder how the 7 Artisans lens compares to the 12 to 32 cheap kit lens for a Lumix Micro Four Thirds cameras. So here's me shooting the M240 with the 7 Artisans on the left and the Lumix camera with the Lumix 12 to 32 on the right. As you can see, there's pretty much no difference, so it begs the question. <laughs> what about price? You can pick up the 7 Artisans for £288 in the UK on Amazon. I'm going to put a link below. And if you're in the US, $299 here from B&H. And if you just need a cheap 28mm setup, you can get the Lumix and the lens used for the same price as the 7 Artisan lens. Okay, so what is the conclusion? Is this lens worth buying or are there better options out there if you are a 28mm shooter? 7 Artisans, why didn't you test your lens before putting it to market? <laughs> I can't believe you made a 28mm lens, which brings up 35mm frame lines on a Leica M camera. What's the point of designing a lens for the Leica M system if you then have it so it brings up the wrong frame lines? What a disaster. What I can say is maybe I've got a bad copy and if you've got this lens yourself and it does bring up 28mm frame lines, let us know in the comments below. If every lens is like this, that's a big mistake. <laughs> you've just lost all your Leica M potential customers in a flash just by a simple design mistake. I was testing it and I'm like, that doesn't look like a 28mm frame line. So then I was testing it against obviously the TTR sand, which brings up the correct 28mm frame line. If we ignore the fact that it brings up a 35mm frame line, would I recommend this lens? I would say no. If you're happy to use a slow 5.6 aperture lens, for me the TT Artisan is a much, much nicer lens. It's better built, it feels better, it looks a lot nicer. It's half the size, which is a means I'd always pick it up. If it, the opticals are similar anyway, I always go for the smaller lens. It looks more like a like being designed on the original, like a Summeron 28 5.6. See that video if you want to see the full details. I can't think of any reason why you would pick the 7 Artisans over the TT Artisan. Yes, the 7 Artisans has got slightly more contrast, which then gives slightly higher saturation, but you can easily apply that in a preset afterwards. One of my Mr. Leica presets will give you more contrast, more saturation anyway, so I'd rather use a nicer lens and fix it after. If you shoot JPEG and you want in-camera, more contrast, more saturation, you can either change the JPEG settings on your camera, which would do the same job, or you could buy the, the 7 Artisan lens. It's not a bad lens, and I think for the price, it does a fair job. With 7 Artisans bringing their lens out after, they needed to do something better than the existing lenses for this lens to sell. The fact that they brought the lens out after, and it doesn't do anything, to my mind, better, I can't see this lens being a great seller. Um, so sorry to say that 7 Artisans, you might have missed the boat on the, the 28 
If you want something faster, I'd definitely recommend looking at something like the Voigtland Ultron 28mm f2. That's my new go-to lens for 28mm. I use that for, say, wedding photography and in low light, the f2 aperture is much more useful. If you're looking at 5.6 aperture lenses, they are great for maybe sunny day travel photography or depending on where you live, maybe you have sun every day. Street photography, 28mm can be great. And if you're going to stop down to 5.6 anyway, but if you need a 28 mil do everything lens you either buy the lucky q <laughs> if you want the 1.7 some looks or for me the i think the voiland ultron offers amazing value for money and with that if you enjoyed the video please smash the like button feel free to subscribe for a chance of winning my monthly giveaways and as always a huge thanks to my awesome patrons see you in the next video bye